Hey everybody, we're back with more Digital Devil Saga 2, as we prepare to wrap up the rest of the grinding, and hopefully today we will then head to the uh, fight with the Seraphs. And with any luck, all the grinding we've done here will... essentially mean we don't need to do any grinding later. With any luck. Because we've got a lot of the tops. We're going for a lot of the top skills. By the time we're done, we're going to have a bunch of the top skills. I feel like there's still a good amount of game left after this. And then we'll still be gaining armor for new skills after that. So my hope is like we won't have to do more. God damn it. Anyway. Could have been so much simpler if Nyx hadn't cast that anti-magic shield. Okay, hit Nyx first. Alright, alright. I wonder how many levels we've jumped up since we started grinding, because I've not been paying attention to that. I've been focusing pretty much entirely on the mantras. So we've gotten considerably stronger, but my focus has been entirely on getting new abilities. Hmm. Alright, what do I want? Void Mute, I think, was one that I wanted for Gabriel. Sure, there were other status effects. Charm. Like charm, maybe. I have to remember what she's weak to. Anyway. Keep pushing it. And eventually we'll be done. I think CL also has a couple more of the level 3 magic mantras to do, but Surfing Gale should be on the last ones. Then I want to get them probably Meteorama. Meteorama is a lower difficulty to learn than level 3 magic. It's still actually a level 2 spell. How is looking? It's looking fine. That's fine. And that's not what I wanted. No. Thank you. Anyway. So we're approaching the end of the grinding, and certainly by the end of today I want to be done with the Seraphs. How bad is this going to go? Cool. Cool. On. There we go. These levels are quite well balanced now. They weren't when we got Surf back. Alright, take out Nyx. 
<coughs> and then the two flyers. And one for Jenny West. Ace is good. Oh no! One guy. Anyway. And a cow. Oh, damn it. It'd be nice if they didn't leave also turned on when reinforcements arrive. That can get nasty if you don't know it. Like I didn't in time. I was grabbing a drink. I was like, yeah, no, the battle's over, it's fine. Oh no, reinforcements. And auto is still turned on. Alright. The question here is, are we gonna have enough MP to Master Sky Wizard and Earth Emperor before we need to go back for a heal? Questions. I don't think we will. Surf's gonna run out too fast. Meanwhile, Gale's over there with full MP because he barely does anything. Usually dead by the time anything gets to him. Oh well. A pass. Do two zeros. Try and spread this out a little so that Surf doesn't run out of MP before we max those mantras. It's not long, not long left. Hey, Chanson. How you doing, buddy? Okay, and then. Dio, and then there we go. Try to master these last two mantras, uh, Sky Wizard and Earth Emperor, before we go and hit the heal point again. Things just keep getting worse, don't they? Hope you are on the upswing, Chanson. That would be nice. Let Gale pull his weight a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, I'm kind of warm, honestly. Kind of want to take the hat off, but I'm not sure if my hair is in a presentable condition. Uh, smack. Smack. Zio. Yeah. <laughs> Who cares? It's kind of a f uh, mildly funny joke. My hair isn't long enough to actually be a mess. It's just that it looks really kind of bland. I was like, yeah, no, take a look at that. Look how bland I look.
So the hat at least adds something. Where was I? Uh, a Zio. And another Zio. I'm, la yeah, I'm glad you do, Teak. Let me show you a secret. Reversible. See? You got the blue with the black, and then you flip it. And this is how I wear it, the black with the blue. It's actually a Nightwing hat. I don't know if you can tell that when it's on my head and all stretched out. How you doing, Teak? Anyway. Oh, great, Gail's asleep. Oh shit. Didn't notice until after I pressed the button that they had an anti-magic shield on. Yeah. I think part of it is the position I sit. Like if I go like that, I think maybe it will see it a little better. I had a Batman Beyond one. Uh, that was kind of similar. It was like the black with the red Batman Beyond symbol, but it shrank in the wash, and I was really disappointed. Oh yeah, Surf needs healing. How's uh, Hyrule Warriors going for you, Teak? And are you looking forward to the announcement of the new DLC character for Smash today? Or tonight, I think? I don't know. Oh. I forget what the time was. I remember it was Pacific time. I forget what the actual time was. The announcement of this new Smash character as well is the only reason I know that the Game Awards are happening today. I knew they were happening soon, I didn't know they were happening today. Until all of a sudden this morning my feed is just flooded with new Smash character announced tonight in the Game Awards. And pass. Fire. The teamwork of Surf and Argyll, is that... Is, is this going to be a joke with a punchline? Or do you have an actual answer? There you go. I, I understand that, too. I hope it works well on your system, but I imagine your system is beefy enough for it. And a Zeo dying. I've heard it's terrible on current gen systems. And also that it is loaded with bugs. And I'm surprised people are even commenting that it's loaded with bugs. It's an open world game. It's a modern open world game. I'm surprised people even still care. Two terabytes 
Solid state drive sounds pretty nice. Smack. Smack. Lightning. Smack. Come on, master. Heard interesting things, but I've heard interesting things and seen an interesting picture. The interesting picture had a female character, a female created character, except her boobs were clipping through her clothes. Texture issues make them easy as well, they're from PS1. I remember seeing... Yeah, I thought these guys had the face repel. I remember seeing um, NPCs on boats in Spider-Man on PS4 look like they're on PS1. <coughs> yeah, I've heard about that one. I've not seen that one, but I heard about it. I, I saw one uh, where boobs are clipping through a female character's clothes. That's the one I saw. I've not even been looking for this. This shit's just appearing on my feed. I have no interest in Cyberpunk. I did three years ago. That's not even me being snarky about how long it took to come out. I did have interest in it three years ago. And then I just kind of stopped paying attention. And now I don't really care. You remember when Conan Exiles, the only reason anybody knew that existed was because you could change the size of your dick? On... Um, be the master. Yes! I should manage to master them without having to go back and uh, hit the heal point. So set that for Gale. Wonder if Cyberpunk's going to end up banned in Australia. Because I remember that um, Saints Row 4 had a naked option that was still it was covered by a pixelated mosaic, but it had a naked option and was banned in Australia. I heard that. I heard that like an hour ago when I was just going through Reddit. Was it no? It was going through Discord. It was on one of the one of the Discord servers I'm on. Somebody posted it, and I didn't know if it was a joke or not. It's a it's a weird choice to put in a game to have characters laugh at you if you're circumcised. That's interesting. Yeah. I mean, as much as people argue otherwise, anything like that, any kind of development choice like that is always reflective of the mind that created the game. Okay, and... There's this one, item find. It's always indicative of the minds behind the game. Behind the game. Hmm. And I wonder what the statement's supposed to be with that. But then I stop wondering and I realise I don't really care.
right. And let's go back. What is Sarah learning at the minute? She is learning Progenitor, which is Diahara. All right. Kind of makes me think of uh, when South Park, the Fractured But Whole, had the whole thing of you. There was a difficulty option in the game, and the higher the difficulty, the darker your skin color was. And it didn't affect anything in the game except how much money you got from combat. Super giant. They're the ones that did Bastion, right? Minimum of 20 days off a year. That could explain why, despite being a... Yeah, it's one of those political statements that South Park does. In the standard manner that South Park makes political statements. And the recent Hades. Yeah, that kind of thing would explain why, despite putting out fairly small games... The, in their history, they've put out like four games. The Bastion, Transistor, there was something else, and then Hades. Not a bad idea, and look at how it's turned out. All the games are very well received and pretty interesting from what I've heard. And as I'm sat here with both Bastion and Transistor and haven't actually played either of them. Hiya, there you go, thank you. It's one of those things that is often stated and yet no, like very few companies ever seem to actually take on board. That reducing actual work time tends to increase efficiency because employees are happier. It's like, oh yeah, remember when it came out the CG, CD Projekt Red was in major crunch for Cyberpunk? And then it was delayed like four times, and it's come out and it's still full of bugs. And it becomes a question of what was the point? Oh yeah. If anything, my suggestion is not being toxic to your employees may be a good production method for good games. I hope people are looking forward to that on the next-gen systems that have under a terabyte of storage space. Yeah, that's what I'm saying, like, it was delayed that many times. And there was the whole thing months ago about Sadpunk being, like, the production being in crunch time. For an extended period. And it's like, the delays and extended crunch result in such a buggy product anyway? What was the point? Open world games, it's incredibly difficult with the scope of them. Incredibly difficult to patch all the bugs. But some of the bugs that we've actually seen and heard about being something that QA should have caught very quickly, especially with the frequency they seem to have been happening. Oh, oh, there it is. 
Well, I hope everybody's enjoyed having Teak with us. Uh, he will be gone for the next month. Pray for him. Oh, that's a fair point. You could probably get like, Teak. If Teak is... No, Teak's not going to be here. It said UPS is here. Teak could probably get a run in while that 50 gig patch installs. Wait a minute, he's getting it delivered. What the fuck console is he getting it for? He said he's getting it for PC, didn't he? Getting a physical PC game in 2020? Let it now. Ah <laughs> oh, yes, madame. I must request let it now. I don't do a good French accent. Yeah, I don't get that. I didn't get that when Nintendo did that for the, po the, the virtual console re-releases of Pokemon. It's like, hey, go out and buy Pokemon Crystal. Physically. Cool. It's an empty cardboard box. It just has a download code. The fuck was the point then? At that point, you're either going to have an empty box on your shelf, or you're immediately throwing the box away. So, what is the point? cardboard price you say that but like it really just hit me in my head the point is probably that it was it was probably cheaper than buying it on steam yeah you know after the god what would it have been there's five collector's editions up there plus others i think I might have had over the years after the Persona 5 Collector's Edition, I was just kind of like, you know what? I don't use any of this. It's like, oh cool, soundtrack CD, that's going to stay in the box. Art book, cool, that's going to stay in the box. The Persona 5 Collector's Edition came with a bag. Shujin, Shujin Academy bag. Cool, I took it out, looked at the size of it, then put it back in the box. It's been there since. And it's always a weird idea to buy a soundtrack for a game you haven't played. Especially when you don't know the soundtrack already. And what if you don't like the soundtrack? I mean, I suppose if it's done by a composer you like, maybe? Like with Persona 5, it's like, oh yeah, no, I might like the soundtrack because the sound, the soundtrack was done by Shoji Meguro and I've liked his previous soundtracks. Like, yeah, I can, I can understand the idea there. You see, for me, Jansen, I think that's just a case of I'm not saying don't buy soundtracks. Soundtracks should just be made available separately. It's like, you know, get the special edition. Oh, Shoji Maguro did this game. But like with Persona, you know there's a specific tone to the music is going to be going with. Which, as we stated before, was part of the problem with the Persona 1 and 2 remakes. That the tone was completely different to the music. Like, it, you should just be able to buy physical soundtracks for games. It shouldn't be such a big issue. I 
That said, what is the point of a physical soundtrack these days versus a digital? Who listens to CDs? I mean, if a game's gonna come with a vinyl soundtrack, maybe? If you're into vinyls? It's like Bane collects vinyls. I think Sina, if Sina pops in, like, ask Sina about his vinyl soundtrack for Final Fantasy VIII. Uh, I can understand the appeal there. I suppose the question with that soundtrack collection then, Chanson, is have you ripped all of it to your PC? And do you now have it all on your phone or an MP3 player if you still have a separate MP3 player or an iPod? People still have iPods. I stopped using my iPod when I got Bluetooth headphones. There's an iPod Classic, which I got just because of the space. 128 gig, great. Let me just put some movies on there and I'll watch those on the bus, that would be nice. But then I got uh, Bluetooth headphones. Because I was tired of dealing with the wires. My OCD with the wires was going crazy. So I just took the wires out of the, out of the equation and bought Bluetooth headphones. And I got myself a Bluetooth adapter to plug into the iPod. And the battery on that dies in, like, half an hour. So eventually I just started using my phone. It's like, yeah, no, I'll connect it to my phone. Because the phone has the native Bluetooth and shit. And I can listen to the music on there, and... Also, it's easier to get audiobooks on there. And everything just became a lot simpler by moving away from the iPod to the phone. For one, like iTunes is a piece of shit software. Yeah, the music on your PC, yeah. Seriously, iTunes is such a piece of shit software. Video game music can be really cool. God damn it. About the composer and such. I think I've mentioned this before. Hmm. It can always be interesting to consider stuff like that. Come on. Come on. Yes. Oh, I never bought music off iTunes. God, no. I've got a lot of the stuff I actually want backed up elsewhere because that shit's bullshit. There's like a file of my music and then an iTunes file of my music for some reason. It had to be duplicated, I have no idea why. Like podcasts and audiobooks, in like just putting those onto the iPod was not worth the trouble, especially since iTunes is such a piece of shit software. I looked into it at one point, and it turns out the reason why iTunes runs so badly is because iTunes on Windows emulates Mac. It emulates Mac OS. I was like, why? Oh, because it's Apple. Okay. I guess. It's amazing to me with how consumer unfriendly Apple is that people still buy Apple. Overpriced, un like under overpriced garbage that isn't worth half the price you pay for. But it's outdated the minute it comes out. 
but people go crazy for it. It's like people make fun of people for having Androids. It's like, yeah, no, cool. It cost me a fraction of the price of your iPhone, and is also like five years ahead of it technologically. But no, you have fun there with your closed end system that you can't do anything with that will shatter if you drop it. Yeah. Actually, I've got my Android that would not be allowed on iOS. Like my emulators that I don't touch. But it's like, no, here we are, scum VM. I can sit here and I can play fucking Monkey Island on my phone. As a touchscreen, works fantastic. Can't do that on iOS. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like dropping, dropping the iPod, not using my iPod Classic anymore. It's still over there. It's now over there on my shelf, covered in dust because I haven't touched it in years. Like not stopping using that ended up being fantastic because it's like okay. What was I using the iPod for? Music, audiobooks, podcasts, occasionally videos. This does all of that so much easier. Download shit you don't need. Remember when there was that whole thing of iTunes just giving everybody a U2 album? And making get a major pain to delete. And yet somehow the ones that came out of that smell like shit were you two and not Apple. Things, Matt. I don't get why people do it. But then I don't get why people do a lot of things, and that's becoming more and more apparent every day. Oh, Jack Frost, this will mix things up. Always down, Jay. Bugaboo, bugaboo, bugaboo. Well, see you, Jack Frost. Anyway. Yeah. You say Bugaboo to me, though, and it's like... I don't even remember what Bugaboo looks like in this game. I think Bugaboo, and I think Bugaboo in Strange Journey. And I was, I was always like, Jimenez, the fuck kind of name is Bugaboo? Hey, anyway, why it's called it Bugaboo, so he called it Bugaboo. Interesting. I have no idea why you would. I assume it's the name of a song. Eh. Alright. Did the Zio. There's a song called that. Yeah. Yeah, no, I never listened to Destiny's Child. I spent like the first. 14, 15 years of my life, not even sure what kind of music I was into. Like, there might be individual songs I'd like, but that'd be like maybe two songs to any one like a person, group, anything, whatever.
then eventually I discovered I was into rock and metal. And then eventually after that I just kind of discovered, you know, I'm into what I'm into and I'm not going to put a fucking label to that because there isn't a label to go with it. It's skating rinks. That sounds like a mishmash. Yeah, mismatch. I'm trying to find something to be into before the incident was crazy. Just have to, you just had to hope eventually you might be exposed to some music that you'd like. Surf, the fuck is wrong with you? God damn. But again, that's the same thing, like hope. That something you'd be exposed to would be what you're into. I mean, I suppose the same is true of a lot of things. Especially games. I hope you were just exposed to the right games. In a time before you could actually pick and choose your own stuff. Even after you could pick and choose your own stuff, you, like, you were still at the mercy of whatever the game shops happened to have. A lot of stuff I would have loved to have growing up that I just didn't. Like a tactical RPG would have been good to have as a kid. Didn't get one of those until the DS. And by then it was too late. I think that was Advanced Wars Dual Strike at that point. Because of course we didn't get... Uh, Final Fantasy Tactics over here. They say outrageous amounts of money, but like I said before, I'm not a collector. I just want to play shit. And if stuff isn't available in my country, or is stupidly expensive... I've made this point before, I'll just emulate it. 
or find some way of playing it like that. Like with how Digital Devil Saga is at the minute, like the prices of PS2 SMT games going up. And it's like if I didn't already physically own these, didn't buy them years ago, I'd probably be doing these some other way. Yeah, Fire Ramble and Path of Radiance, god damn. Like Nintendo will tell you, don't emulate that. Don't download an ISO of that and don't play that on something like a modded Wii. I'll tell you, fucking do it. Nintendo aren't re-releasing it. Nintendo aren't getting any any of that $400 you're paying for it on eBay. If Nintendo turns around and re-releases it, puts it on a GameCube Mini, if they ever do one of those, which they should, or like, actually puts more games on the Switch Online service to make it worth a damn, then yeah, no, purchase it. If you have an actual way of purchasing it that will put money towards the publisher and the developer, do that. But when you don't, and it is so overpriced, fuck them. This, this is the whole thing of what I mean with Nintendo and why I'm concerned about the anniversaries. It's like, yeah, Mario's 35th anniversary, Mario's the big dog, and the 30th, 35th anniversary showing was, let's be fair, shit. And, oh, it's Fire Emblem's 35th anniversary, so we're going to give you, for a limited time only, a full trans, a full localization of the original Fire Emblem. It's like, okay. One, why limited time? Two, why the original? And more than that, that's specifically for the Western audience. Because the original is available on the Switch Online service in Japan. It becomes a case of like, okay, you wanted to give us the original story. Okay. Why not localize Mystery of the Emblem on Super Famicom then? Where the first game is half of that. Like that that remake is half first game, and then the second half is entirely new. It's a sequel. And then, you know, don't put that out for a limited time. And then with Zelda, like, I'm fully expecting them to turn around and be like, yeah, no. Full price for individual the individual copies of Wind Waker HD and Twilight Princess HD. And it's like, yeah, you know, I really wanted these games on Switch, but fuck off, Nintendo. Also, here's a limited time re-release of Four Swords Adventures. Cool. Fuck off, Nintendo. Also, here's the Legend of Zelda 35, where it's a Battle Royale version of the original Zelda. No, fuck off, Nintendo. No, I don't. I don't even expect 35 Swords Adventures. I think it'd be the exact same thing Super Mario 35 was. The original game, except, oh yeah, no, it's multiplayer, and players that you're playing with, when they kill enemies in their game, those enemies will appear in your game, and that's it. And they'll cut out the overworld, and it'll just be the dungeons. Yeah. I really want that meme to gain more traction, because people really need to get off the bandwagon of sucking Nintendo's dick. For a long time, like they've been, they've been sat on a gold mine of IPs for a very long time, and there's been the hope that they'll do something with it for a long time, and they haven't. 
But I was kind of balanced by them not being such a horrible company. The stuff was overpriced, yes. But in a lot of cases, wasn't entirely their fault. Their games just held value. Before this generation, like, one of the biggest problems with Nintendo was largely the whole thing of buying games on the virtual console and then having to buy them again on a new system, rather than them just crossing over. But now, no, there's legitimate major complaints to be made about the business. And it's a mess, and people still suck the dick. And I feel like I'm going crazy whenever I complain about Nintendo. Because for every complaint I make about Nintendo, there is a hundred people... This, this, pro this is probably an underestimate. hundred people on the internet talk about how their bad decisions are so good for us. It's like, oh yeah, no, Super Mario 3D All-Stars. It's a shame that it's only available until March 31st, and it's more expensive than it should be, but it's a collection of three timeless games that you really should go out and buy. It's like, you know what, no. You know, I'm gonna say virtual condoms are probably less than 90% effective. You might want to speak to somebody about it. Hey, don't worry about me. I feel like you don't understand what the Ask Me Anything is for. But, you know, you want to love Dr. Pepper, you love Dr. Pepper. I don't like Dr. Pepper. Like, seriously, the Mario 3D All-Stars comes out, and people are, people are just like, it's, it's a shame, and with it's weird and we don't understand why Nintendo is only offering it for a limited time and it shouldn't be a full price product and the emulation is pretty lacking and it's bare bones and there's problems with it 9 out of 10 sorry what I think it's become more and more apparent over, I want to say the last five years, but it's probably better to say like the last eight, that a lot of the gaming sites that you may pay attention to and follow are increasingly unreliable for actual honest reviews. What are you sorry for, Jansen? Yeah, increasingly unreliable for actual honest reviews and shit. So many of these things will put down any opinion, but none of that matters. Because it's the number at the end that matters. And, yeah, no, the game is complete shit. 8 out of 10. Because if they put anything less, then the publisher might blacklist them and they won't get review copies. And they won't get access to preview events. It's like, oh, that could be devastating. It's like, yeah, probably could be. But you know what else is devastating? Your reader base just losing interest. Too much water is. Too much water is a weird example because I read that review. What is a kind of an opposite example because that review, I read the review and the review was full of praise for Alpha Sapphire and Omega Ruby and then at the end it's like 7.3 and the only real negative on it is too much water. It's like the weirdly opposite thing. 
I haven't watched Attack on Titan. I want to get around to it eventually, but I just I don't watch series anymore because committing myself to a series is such a chore. I'll watch a movie. I'll sit down and watch a movie because like what's that? Two hours at most. That said, Great Escape came on Netflix this week, and it's like, oh, how long's that? It's just under three hours. Well, I'm gonna put some time aside for that then at some point. It's like three hours as opposed to. Let's say a 13 episode series. Which is then like at least 12 hours. There's then time. Yeah, you don't you don't have to use the ask me anything to just post an opinion wide about me. Overly interested in uh, Yakuza Like a Dragon, largely because I, it's completely different. Yeah, it will be here when you get back, Chanson. Yeah, it's largely because it's completely different. It could be a fantastic JRPG, and eventually I'll get around to it. But I. It's a new, it's a new thing. Yakuza suddenly being a JRPG, not necessarily a bad idea. It could be fantastic. I've heard good things about it, but I'm not immediately attracted to it because it's completely different from what Yakuza has been previously. What do you mean, am I worried about me? Am I what? So if you're asking about your cues like a dragon, like I say, not overly interested. It may turn out to be a fantastic JRPG. I've heard good things about it. And as a setting, you're drinking. Okay. There's a setting, modern day Japan, and with it being set in the Yakuza universe without monsters or anything, it's like, yeah, no, gangster fights in JRPG form. That could be fascinating in its own right. But for the minute, if I'm going to Yakuza, it's for the solid beat em up action combat. I'll probably pick it up eventually, but like I've got so many games to get through at the minute. It's like let's talk about just the stream. Is that like how many RPGs we have to do for the stream? We've got the rest of this. Uh, Bane redeemed a playthrough of Skies of Arcadia. Klim redeemed a playthrough of Final Fantasy VII. Uh, we have Legend of Dragoon coming up, and I promise Chance of my do near. And I want to do The Legend of Heroes Trails in the Sky. And I want to go back and finish Lost Odyssey. That's seven. Yeah, original FF7. I've not, I've not got the remake. Red Ninja End of Honor. That's a PS2 game, right? I think I do somewhere in my pile of PS2 games. Yeah, OG FF7. And like, of those RPGs I listed, that's probably the shortest. I'll have that done in like 35 hours. Your End of Honor. I've seen that. I have it. I'm pretty sure. But it, I've seen that somewhere for some reason. Tenshu, that's why. God damn it. I do want to get Sekiro because it's supposed to have been originally intended to be a Tenchu game. And I've got Shinobido because it was done by a company that previously made Tenchu games. And then, like, Tenchu's a license at this point. And they, the 
publisher gave the license to somebody else or something. I don't know what happened with it. Well, they didn't have the rights to make Tenchu games anymore, so they just made a new ninja series, Shinobito. And it's alright. I wouldn't mind doing some Tenchu. I have Tenchu Z there that I've never done. On Xbox. Ooh. That could be interesting, actually. Yeah, chances are nobody's playing it online now. I remember Tenchu Return, Return to Darkness, which was the Xbox, the original Xbox version of Wrath of Heaven. Uh, that had a co-op mode, but it either, I don't remember the specifics, it either wasn't very good, or I never had anybody very good to play it with. I don't, I don't remember the specifics of what that was about. There's a similar thing with uh, Splinter Cell Chaos Theory, that had a co-op, and I never had anybody very good to play that with. Which is a shame, because it was a cool co-op. It's like, um, Rogue Squadron 3. Star Wars Rogue Squadron 3 Rebel Strike on GameCube. Had as a really cool bonus. The entirety of the Rogue Squadron 2 campaign playable in co-op. And I never finished it on Rogue I never finished it that way. I finished Rogue Squadron 2. Rogue Squadron 2 is great. I never finished Rogue Squadron 2 co-op on Rogue Squadron 3. Because I never had somebody to play it with who was any good. And like I say, not very good. I mean, like, getting us a game over in the first level because we share lives. When... It's a shame, but like, if you, if you do have somebody competent to play that with, Rogue Squadron 2 is fantastic. Adding co-op to it is a lot of fun. to nullify mute. Like, rather than void, just have it null as a uh, standard. That would be worth it. That would be worth considering. Turn around the Gabriel fight entirely. Nice. Nice to see the enemy missing a bunch instead of me for once. Eric 2 is almost done. Okay, kill Nyx. And then go for Randa. Nice. One more fight should finish Esoteric 2. And then we should be all good.
And then we just go and get something else. I want Sarah to finish leveling Gaia Haran. There we go, Esoteric 2, Miser's Spirit. Replace that with something else. So what are you playing at the minute, Why do you bite me? You said you're looking forward to... You can't wait to play Like a Dragon. Uh, what are you playing at the minute while you're waiting for it? Or, like, before you get to it? Esoteric 2 done. Stay Decay 2. What about off stream? Are you playing that off stream as well? Uh, that'd be Diaharan, and that's be Diaharan. Summer Recon for 1500 is a bad idea. Take longer to fill than either level 3 spells. Summer Recon is valuable. Oh, you're doing off stream as well. That's fair enough. I don't tend to play games that I'm playing on the stream, off stream. I don't know specifically what you're talking about. Like I say, I don't have FF7 Remake and I've not watched anyone play it. I'd rather try and be as fresh as possible. But I imagine Ghost Enemies in Midgar. Going off the original or probably in the trading graveyard. Yeah, Summer Recon. Does Sarah have Summer Recon? Or does she just have Recon? Yeah, there's Recon. Summer Recon would be well worth the effort. Okay, fair enough. That's interesting. I wonder how many games that prevents you from playing then. Wait a minute, did I say we're almost at 2 million? Right. I'm sorry you weren't able to uh, properly enjoy it then, why do you bite me? Really is a shame to get presumably, like, I imagine if it is a train graveyard, it's probably a good way into the game. Uh, to get that far and just not be able to continue for... Outside reasons. the original Final Fantasy 7. I don't think there were ghosts anywhere else in the game. No, no, the Yin attack. The Gi tribe were ghosts. And hit you with the Zeodyne. I think Demon's probably going to like two more fights. Nice. Uh, six realms is going to take ages. 
But if we get Summer Recon, that immediately negates the need to be considered to be concerned about revival gems. A full heal revival is very useful. But once Sarah's done with Progenitor, we're gonna go and try out the Seraphs again. Shouldn't take that long. I could get more of those change rings. I'd be down for that. Not having to spend a turn transforming, yeah. Yeah, it's gonna rain tomorrow, but it'll be warmer than it was today. Good thing that missed, because that would have killed, sir. There we go. Aura. Let's go back and replace Demon with Summer Recon. One less. Sitter. What is the middle one going to be now that we should unlock it? Oh, that's not a new thing at all. It's a stat boost. Nice. That's even better. Uh, physical... Four, six, six. That's a turn three. That's a... Three. This was also level three, the fail hunt. Only fifty thousand. A calm jura. One hit point cost. 300,000 to learn. To a calm draw. Anyway, Summer Recom, learning the six realms. That'll take a while to get through. That'll be something we can do as we just progress. That sounds, that sounds reasonable. Yeah. Everybody's strength by two, though, by finishing off even is nice. Hey, what do we got? And lightning. It's probably going to be like another 15 minutes at least. I wonder how much of this game is actually left though. And the question becomes with uh, the eventual FF7 playthrough we do for Klim. 
do we go out of our way and do a bunch of grinding for that to do the super bosses? And if we do the super bosses, the question is like, how do I break them? I suppose at this point, with how things generally are, when people show off fights against the super bosses in FF7, it'd be less common to show off a legitimate fight. But who wants to fight Ruby and Emerald legitimately? No, what you do is you get Vincent's death penalty and kill enough enemies with it that the stat overflows so then everything is killed in a single shot. It'd probably be quicker to just grind everybody to level 99 for that, actually. That, that stat underflow takes so long. Of most the most MP. And then smack. Little by little. What is 4 p.m. Eastern time? Not the Eastern time, Pacific time. No idea how far behind me it is. Like nine hours, maybe. Nine sounds reasonable, which would mean. What would that be? 1 a.m.? It's a good thing I had no interest in watching the Game Awards anyway, because I think the entire thing is just a potential load of shit. It'll be nice to look forward to waking up in the morning and seeing all the announcements without the... Oh, what's the word? Presentations, I guess. That went with them. Presentations are never anything but irritated and often cringy. Nice. Alright, almost done with Progenitor. Once we're done with that, we'll have Sarah learn six realms as well. Everybody has a uh, Samarika. It'll be for the best. Yaksa. Damn it. These questions are... Uh... In a lot of cases, way tougher and more obscure than the stuff the seed exams ask you in FF8. Alright, fire. Lightning. Lightning. Awesome. Almost there. While I'm doing this, it wouldn't be a bad idea to look up exactly what level I was uh, 
before I started grinding. Hmm. Let me see if I can find that information. Uh, that random encounter took a while to happen. Uh, lightning. And another one. Okay, DDS2 playlist. Session 7, I think it was. As you dying. Yeah, that's when we were facing off against Gabriel. Okay, so can we find what level we were? I think I've got it. Okay, so before we started grinding, Surf was level 46. So, Surf has jumped to... Uh, 17 levels, Sarah was level 48, she's jumped up 15 levels, Gail was 47, he has jumped up 15 levels, Cielo was also 47, he has also jumped up 15 levels. There we go. That's good to know, like, 15 extra levels should put a e little extra punch into our attacks. On top of just actually pulling out stronger attacks, which was the entire point of this grinding session. So we could have the harder hitting magic. There. So how is State of Decay 2 right about me? I played the first one for a bit, uh, and I've got it on Steam, uh, but I played the first one for a bit on Xbox, and it was enjoyable enough, but I felt like it didn't have a lot to it past the first couple of hours. Felt like one of those games that really is best off with co-op. It's addictive. Uh, that's less story driven. This sounds like I probably won't enjoy it as much. Co-op and you run out of surprise. Yeah, the first one was co-op, but I never played it with anybody. I feel like I probably would have enjoyed it more if I had. Lim's currently got Game Pass. Maybe I can finagle him into uh, doing it with me and doing favors. It's always favors, isn't it? Fetch quests. Magma. Yeah, maybe I could finagle Clement apply it with me. Perhaps. 
We're doing Gears at the minute though, and Gears is fun enough. I say that, and then like on Monday when we were playing, I actually did say like, so far if it were, if we weren't doing this co-op, I'd be bored out of my skull. Because the game itself is actually really dull. Come on, come on. Get that progenitor done. Your 50 gig patch is at 63% already, T, and you're irritated at how slow it's going? God damn. Oh, it may just be the install stage. Oof. You know, I hate the games take so long to install these days. It's like when I got Final Fantasy 15, you could download the 77 gig and then 50 gig patch. You'd assume they'd come together, especially on Steam. You'd assume they'd come specifically with the patches. Because that's... In, that's supposed to be the point of downloads. Like, the whole thing, like installing games taking ages, reminds me of Final Fantasy 15. I had Final Fantasy 15 on disc. I stuck it in the system in my PS4, and it did the whole thing of like installing, installing, and then it said installing was done, and I started the game up, and it turned out installing wasn't done, and all I could do was look at the menu. For like the next hour as it finished installing. It's like, why did it tell me installing was done then? Oh, you're on GOG. Huh. Well, I suppose the good thing with GOG then would be that you could just take the file elsewhere. If you're getting off GOG Galaxy, I think it'll come with the patch. If you're getting it just getting the download installer, I think the patches for those do come separate. But it's been a while since I've used GOG. I stopped trying to play games on PC. In <laughs> 33 more percent. Well, we're almost done with leveling Progenitor, so hopefully that'll finish fast enough, fast enough for us to show you something a little more interesting while you wait, Teague. There's also the concern, like, if... If Cyberpunk is this buggy, even with the day one patch, the 50 gig day one patch, how buggy is it elsewhere? How, how buggy is it without that patch? Uh, this stun. And Zeodyne. 50 gig patch. This is just where we're at with games now. It's like when I got Doom 2016 and I bought it physically because I got it for like £15. It's like, yeah, no, fuck it, I'll pick that up for £15. And I got it physically and stuck it in. It was like, well, I'm not playing this today. 30 gig download patch. 
And most of that was for the fucking multiplayer that I didn't want to play. But it's like, you take all of the patches, or you don't have any of them. And games these days never launch in an actual stable state. That's one of the things that always surprised me with Persona 5. When Persona 5 came out in the West, it never got a patch. Even now, base Persona 5 has no patch on PS4. Be the last fight. The last fight we need. Come on. I could make this go faster for Sarah if I had her eat some of the enemies. But then her eating the enemies means nobody else gains the atma from that. Gains the karma from that. Come on, almost there. Ladies. I think two more fights, but I'm pretty sure Boltmaster is going to max out after this fight. You know, you, we talk about the size of patches, and it makes me really glad that I don't play Call of Duty. Because with all the patches having accumulated, the Call of Duty, I think Warzone is the big one at the minute uh, to talk about. With all the patches of that having accumulated, that is like 250 gig, that game. That game. It's like whenever there's a patch come out for Master Chief Collection and they just keep putting out patches that are like 40 gig. The file size hasn't ballooned, so I don't know what they're doing with it. But it's irritating every other... every other week to have to download a huge patch for it for when I keep playing. Yay. Yeah, you'd think that. But like I say, then there's stuff like Call of Duty and I think like Warzone's the big one uh, that people are talking about file size wise. It's like 250 gig plus. Meanwhile, on the opposite end of that, Warframe came out a little while back and said, we're going to be cutting our file size down significantly. And it's like, you know what? Cool. I only played you for like 10 minutes, Warframe, but that's a, that's a cool thing and I appreciate that. It's a shame with all these 40-odd 40 40 -odd gig patches that Microsoft keeps putting out for Halo that Halo 2 doesn't fucking work on co-op. It's that last little bit. It's like, yeah, no, the bar's almost full, and there's like five more battles. Still get the experience. 
Gale, don't miss this time. There we go. Okay, Bolt Master is done. So let's set that for Cielo. And next he has to learn a uh, He does have mutual karma equip, right? Yeah, he does. All right. So well and good. And then, uh, Emperor. The good news with all this grinding, on top of all the other good news of how this grinding is going to benefit us, is we've got a bunch of money now. And that should keep us pretty well off for uh, buying more mantras for a while. Those higher one, those super high level ones are still going to wipe me out immediately. Like they did in the first game. Okay, come on, one more fight for Progenitor. Want my dear Haran. Oh, damn it. Oh, damn it. Nice cool chance and we are just about done with the grinding. Sarah has now learned Diaharan. I want to put Diaharan on there. No, because if charm hits, bad idea to have Diaharan when you're up against the boss that can do charm. Worked out my favour for the f for the final boss of DDS1, if you remember. It's like, oh no, the final boss has charmed somebody. I think that happened. And it's like, oh no, the final boss has charmed somebody. And now that person has cast, like, the healing spell that they have on the final boss. <laughs> Thank god I was using Diorama and not Diaharan. And that wasn't even because I was anticipating that. It was because Diaharan cost more and Diorama had been doing me fine. It's weird how effective Diorama was in DDS1. Okay. Let's go take those fuckers down. And since it's been... Oh, Chansom, I also took a look at uh, what levels we were before we started grinding. On average, we've leveled up, uh, I think, like 16 times. Yeah. But with the last time I tried to fight these guys being like three sessions ago, I don't remember what they're all weak to. That was like 10 hours of grinding. Yeah, it just took that long to level the rest of the uh, the skills up that we just kept getting the um, experience. Okay, so they are... Here. This is the nearest save point. 
This is the big terminal. If we teleport there, it will take longer than us just walking there from here. Now yeah, let's go kick some angel ass. Beat him down, beat him down, beat him down. Gonna beat the angels in the face, gonna kick their asses all over the place. Okay. Gotta appreciate those blips on the karma meter. Is it weird the Karma Society still has people down here? Right ahead. <laughs> yeah, don't, don't, don't think on that. The occupied sector with the only way out being controlled by the Luca Parlor. Luca, Luca Parlor. All right, so throw down the save. I don't think there's any need to do a heal, but we'll check the heal terminal anyway. I think we're killing everything before they can lay a finger on us. Although, while I'm here, it'd be a good idea to reset skills. Uh, Dine, Zandine, I want. Diorama. But also, Meteorama and Recon would be a good idea. Well, we'll check the terminal anyway. But I don't think we'll need it. We're hitting everything too fast. Meteorama. Meteorama. Recon. You know, it probably would have been a good idea, however, to stock up on some items that would negate status effects. Yeah, we don't need the Atma bonus because we are not going for... Atma. We don't get enough Atma even with the Atma bonus down here to make not having it even mean anything. Alright, let's do this. Gonna have to make notes of this. I don't think this is gonna go down in one shot. Yep. I don't think this is gonna go down in one shot because I don't remember the weaknesses. However, I will be ready to make notes on the weaknesses for a potential second shot. I'm back, bitches. Oh fuck your thousand year kingdom, you pretentious pricks. 
All right, so Uriel. Not fire. You're a seraph, and all you've got is your baby almighty attack, you bitch. Nice. Uriel, Raphael, Gabriel, Michael. Well, you know what they say. Nice ice, baby. And since everybody has media armor now, that also lightens the burden on party heals. Whereas previously, like, oh no, media armor, we need to. Nice, that's only been like one turn of four weaknesses and he's done this. Means we don't need to do the two. Uh, two turn heals. To heal the party. You know, let's throw media armor out now. Nice ice, baby. Get your bitch ass out of here. Rough. I don't think you were fire. You were not. You're not gonna be ice. You're flying, so I doubt you're gonna be her. Were you force? You were not force, so you're probably electricity. Okay. Leo. Zio. Elect. Let's tear him down. It'd be nice if he could be shocked for one of these, so I can just follow up with a turn of physical crits. But, you know, sometimes the angels just don't want to play fair. Heal out for Sarah. And then hit again. You know what? I'm gonna call bullshit that you did that twice. Don't you be lowering my stats like that. Should have focused on finishing him before the heal. Gabriel. Were you force? Yes. Alright, let's do a Meteorama. And... Blow her away. Okay, so, now we start getting strategic with it. Get the extra turn. 
Sarah is muted, so no magic. However... Gale is less reliable as he is at the minute, like that. And then extra turn. And do a Zandine. And then a Dismute. And another Zandai. No. Yeah, yeah, make Jubilee as the creator. Oh, you motherfucker. Great, now we just have to hope. And the most important thing here is to hope a panacea will hit Sarah. There we go. Work this out then. Panacea on Gale. Panacea on Sir. Let's throw down a Meteorama while we have the chance and take Gabriel out of the picture. Here we go. Now, based on what we had so far, they're all flying, so I'm going to assume they're all immune to Earth. However, that leaves four other elements. The only one nobody's been weak to is fire. Not fire. They started it. Not that much there, is it, Michael? Okay, Zio. You're not going to be weak to anything, are you? You're going to be awkward. Yeah. I'm half tempted to see if Michael's going to be weak to gun. Yeah, we can do better than that. Take the risk. Try Terror. Not immune. So immediately, Michael becomes a little more tricky because not immune, but not weak to anything. So burn this fucker down. And he can hit everything. It's all the weaknesses. Interesting twist. Yeah, the red number is coming up really fast. And also got lucky with that panacea off Surf when he was confused. Yeah, but in Bayonetta, that also only works in cutscenes, because Bayonetta operates off the same logic as Devil May Cry, where guns are only really effective in cutscenes. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go off Pokemon logic instead, and use lightning against birds. The interesting thing is, though, if we die here, which isn't likely, but this is Shin Megami Tensei, anything could happen. If we die here, I'm going to give one of each of the characters an amp against the weaknesses of the previous three angels. 
and then have them use the magic that they're ramped up with on Michael. If we die here. The birds aren't real. Not in this world, at least. Yeah, dude, I found out like 20 hours ago I'm not even a real person. Give me a break. There's the red numbers. There's the trick. Always something with Shimming Me Tensei. Always something. So the question becomes how do you survive that? Not only does it weaken your overall combat performance, which is a thing I hate, it hits everybody and it hits everybody for serious damage. It hits when red numbers hit. Presumably it's physical based. When red numbers hit, immediately pull out. An attack mirror. That could be the key. But now we get to try out my little plan that should speed everything else up. Okay, so set. Um, we're not using diorama. Enemy panics when all attack. Interesting. Uh, so, Surf can have Ice Amp, Sarah can have Elec Amp, Gale can have Force Amp. Which then gives them all a boost against uh, Michael. You know what? No, I have a better idea. Because we're not using... Fire or Earth. As we're going to go in all guns blazing. Really tear them apart. You may consider this overkill. That's the point. <laughs> it's using guns, yeah. Even if Michael is weak to guns, the drawbacks of being in human form anyway make it not worth it. Everybody make it hot in this party. 
Don't stop and move your body. Okay, let's go kill some angels. Again. You know, I do like that they've kept the same designs for, like... Was that SMT1? Like, 92? So, like, 28 years? I like they've kept the same designs for a lot of these for, like, 28 years. Ice. Yeah, it didn't matter. My thought was, okay, don't attack with Gale. Don't put him down to red numbers. He won't use that irritating attack that hits everybody in lowest stats. But he did anyway, so let's just, let's just kill him. Can I negate that with items? Do I have a Decunda Rock? I have a Decaja, I don't have Decunda. Damn. Oh well. Nine hits. Nine hits. Let's consider that. Assume Gabriel's gonna be the same way. And then spend the rest of this like this. If we can if this manages to keep her in her first phase. Like, if not going any further keeps her in her first phase. Then this could be very helpful. Amps are really good. Takes a while to get them, really good. Fence up. Also worth considering. Hey, Gale's hit with that, which means we have to sacrifice a turn for this. But if I'm if I'm lucky and I've thought this out right. No. Damn it. My hope was to keep her in the first phase if she takes her first attack, and then skip phase two and three.
so we won't have to deal with that. Oh, that was fortunate. Okay, Panacea. Panacea. Zandine. Zandine. Come on. Yes. That works out. And then just hit Michael with boosted attacks. Yada yada yada. Really wasted your opportunity there. Yeah, the concern was when red numbers came in. Right, this is a heal situation. Holding it steady for the minute. How you doing, Lena? I think I said earlier before, like, I can't do a French accent. Yeah, no, I know, I know where it is. I know where it's from. I think everybody knows where that one's from. That's fair enough. Alright. I don't want to talk to you no more, you empty headed animal food trough wiper! I fought in your general direction. Your mother was a hamster and your father smelled of elderberries. Now go away, or I shall taunt you a second time! I think that's probably the worst one we've done so far. No, I really fucking can't. Thanks, Teague. Alright, you take care of yourself, Whitey Bite Me. Thanks for joining us. Have yourself some fun with State of Decay 2. I'm glad Lino enjoyed it. Now my throat's hurting now from uh, doing that voice. Okay, we hit the red numbers, pull out an attack there. Right now, full heal. Oh, you dick. Would have preferred if he kept using... We're gonna explode.
Oh, god damn it. Come on. We got lucky with that. What a time to miss. Okay, red, pull out the attack now. Let's hope this works. Yeah. Glad he didn't just pull out, friggin' explode another four times. Is he going to do it again? That's the real question now. Attack mirrors are not easy to come by. Fucking dick. Oh, there we go. I don't know what will become of them. So what's that? Two and a half sessions of grinding? And, of course, the reminder of how Shin Megami Tensei works in that Oh hey, you are st like stat wise and skill wise strat stat wise skill wise strategy wise set to win this. And the Shimigami Tensei reminder of don't get fucking cocky though, we'll still kill you. Ugh. So the date of the angels' data floated off to the sky. I'd expect to be sat in the next few dungeons, honestly. But did the angels' data set floated off towards the sky, floated off elsewhere. Which begs the question, are we going to see them again now? Possibly. Uh, yeah, no, throw horror in there. Horror sounds good. Does it? No, I'm not eating them at the minute, so life bonus. Agidine... Herodyne. Diorama. There probably is no real need to have Diaharan, is there? Maybe later. But yeah, with after all that grinding and how easily the angels went there. I expect to be set for the next few next few dungeons. Nothing else here. Did I get an item from that fight? Special ring, maybe?
Don't look like a ring. I don't even know. I mean, we got a significant amount of karma from it. I mean, look at that. That's significant. Especially since this is difficulty level 6. Okay, let's get out of here. And we've still got time left to actually do some of the next dungeon. So finally, progress. Yay. Feeling good, feeling good. That was less bullshit uh, than I expected. They're also strong. Ooh. Hello. Whoa, <laughs> that's expensive. 1.5 million. And I have to finish six realms to even see what it has. Thank you for the 50 bits, Chansom. I appreciate that. That's a, that's a lot of time spent. A lot of time spent. And 1.5 million, difficulty level 9. That is a significant jump above everything we've got so far on the Mantra Grid. And that makes me curious about what that's actually going to have. Because it says Michael's skills, but the only skills of the only skill Michael had that could be interesting was omnipotence. But it's a physical skill, so I wouldn't be overly into it. Thank you, Chanson. And I'm sat here thinking to myself, like, if we do, if we actually, if when we do Nocturne, it's like. You know that grind is going to have to happen off screen because. Because that. That's a lot more. Yep. And it's kind of awkward as well because part of my reasoning for showing the grinding with Digital Devil Saga has been so you can see the mantras that I'm getting and what I'm going with and how I'm setting everything up. It's considerably less complicated than the setups in Nocturne because in Nocturne it's about specific demons with specific skills. Far more complicated than just picking uh, skills to have. And going through the compendium and resummoning specific demons and fusing those demons and hoping you'll end up with something you want. Like seriously, if the HD remaster just gives you the ability to choose what skills are inherited, then major improvement right there and we're good. What a journey. You hope infusion doesn't fuck you over. When Jimatsu was um doing some of the preview stuff for the Nocturne HD remaster, they had um Look at that. Eleven Jasmines. Max rank. Nice. And 13 Sakuras. I think we're set for money for a while. Um, yeah, Jimatsu was showing it, and they had a list of information that had been provided by Atlas somewhere. I'm unsure exactly where, if it was provided by Atlas at the time, or if it was taken from a manual. Uh, on the PS2, perhaps. 
but the information pretty much outright stated save before you do fusions and if you don't get the result you want reload and do it again let's take that power data thank you I'd like to have this but 400,000 times 4 so 1.6 million for that Like it's a considerable power boost over what we're currently shooting, but god damn. Yeah. I've got the money to max out on these though. Fuck yeah. It's poison. Revival orb for 600,000? Reusable, but how much reusable is it? Because if it's a revival gem that never runs out, great. Right. 600,000? Yes, please. But this, it reminds me of the um, the boxes, the magic boxes you can get in Skies of Arcadia. Those are reusable, but they'll break after a random number of uses. Yeah, be careful of that. Oh yeah, the karma rings. Let me see, I'll buy... one of each, I guess. I have ten fingers. I would like ten SP power rings, please. And if you tell me you don't think I'll need any more, again, I will have 10 more to put on my toes. And if you say it again, I'm gonna put one on my dick and then I'm gonna punch you. See how things go. Honestly, Chancer, my suggestion Get all the bling. My suggestion for the um, the boxes. Don't be afraid to use them. Expect them to break every time you use them. Don't count on having a second use. Oh no, I mean like straight punch. But like, at that point you're talking 21 rings. They each boost my strength by 9. 9 plus 9 is my strength per ring. 21 rings. And then you just don't even, don't even need a punch. It's like, all right. Uh, so Surf currently has Vital plus five to Vitality plus six to Strength. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna give him SP Vital. Hundred and seventy one strength. Someone's gonna feel that. Rage ring, what do you have on rage? Okay, so we'll give you strength. Gale has follow up ring. What do we have added to that? Strength, vitality, and agility.
Magic or agility? Agility seems more necessary. However... Oh, yay. Vitals and 60 like this. Yeah, I suggest that Gale could do with Vitality more than Sarah. Oh, yeah. You gotta put yourself first, Shansom, is what I always say. And I feel like getting yourself a new heater will be better in the long run than playing Skies of Arcadia for a, on a Friday. Don't worry about me, I'll just be sat here crying. I was, uh, I, that was that was real looking forward to Skies of Arcadia, but it's it, it, it's it, it's okay. Like, don't don't worry about it. You just get rid of all this information I have for the, the seraphs. Ah. <laughs> uh. Do you think I should put the luck ring on Surf? Do you think it would even mean anything? Alright. So Vitality, Sarah has magic. Which puts her to 62, which makes her our heavy hitter on magic. 55, 53. Gale doesn't... See, Yellow could do with Vitality way more. Yeah, at this point, not really. Put the quick on it. Everybody else is doing better for accuracy than Gale. And we do that. Not rally. From around here to RM boy. Telling us about how our rally works. Okay, so. Uh, I'm going to want to throw something into magic here. We have this. I'm going to put three pink crystals in. And then the SP power ring is also adding nine to magic. And that should be good. Okay, she has the SP magic ring. What do we have for strength? Plus three strength, but we can do that twice. And then we could give her a plus four to vitality as well. So yeah, let's do that. And then two plus three is the strength. And then quick. 55, 60. Gale is on 50. Not a big deal. Boosting his vitality is probably a good idea. And Cielo strength is really important considering where Cielo is at. However, he is also behind everybody else on magic. And I have a bunch of pink crystals. That should be good. Let's save that. And the rest of the rings we get will just be probably gimmick rings, is my guess, since the, the focused rings uh, were all bought from the shop and there's nothing else we can unlock in the shop. All right, let's go with the sun.
Goonies. Let's hit the save point. Mantras are still good. I would like for Cielo to finish his mantra before we finish this dungeon. Yes. I have, I, at this point, I only use one PS2 memory card. I have a 64 megabyte memory card. Which, like, your standard PS2 memory card is 8 meg. Is it 8 megabits or megabytes? Probably megabits. Uh, your standard PS2 memory card is 8. I have a 64. So, I have essentially, it's, a, it's an official memory card, it's not even a third party one. Um, it's eight times the size. So I only need the one. All my PS2 stuff is saved on this one. With the exception of a couple of PS2 games that wouldn't transfer the save file over from my original to my bigger one. The only game I can think of off the top of my head that wouldn't do that was Mortal Kombat Armageddon. But yeah, years ago, it was like six, 64 megabyte or megabit car memory card for the PlayStation 2. It's an official Sony one, like not a cheap third party one, so that's great. That immediately wipes out a single concern to have. And it was £10. I bought it years ago, it was £10. I can understand that. However, at this point, I'm kind of... If it happens while I'm playing a game, like if the memory card gets corrupt while I'm playing DDS2, I will be furious. If it happens after... Oh, big deal. Ain't nothing to worry about. Ah. Finally, somewhere new. Yeah, generally, I've not had many memory card corruptions. I've had a couple, but they've all been when I've done something wrong with the memory card. While playing FF9, yeah. I had a save file on Xbox Corrupt with Tony Hawk's Underground, but that was because the game crashed while it was saving, so that was kind of irritating. Uh, and my Tekken 5 save data was lost at one point when I was playing it with a friend at a friend's house, and I brought Tekken 5 and my memory card, so we had all the characters. Uh, and my friend turned the game off while it was saving. Oof. Was that your first playthrough or was that a repeat playthrough? Because repeat playthrough is irritating, but ultimately not a huge issue. First playthrough, though, though, like, mm, I guess I'm not playing this game again for several years. Ooh. I'm playing that again for several years. Are you still alive? Why are both of you still alive? I had that with Metroid Prime. My brother deleted my save once in Metroid Prime. And I didn't play it again for a while. A good while. Oh, hey, look, an actual map of the world. You can tell this isn't an American map because America isn't in the center. That was a weird thing to find out that American maps have America in the center and basically cut Asia in half because America wanted to be in the center. That's dumb.
That's cool. That is... is good. It's something a lot of people don't really think of. Uh, save files being available online. For various reasons. Well, DDS is about to take place in the sun. Are these guys getting tougher all of a sudden, or are we just weaker? Because it was a thing that we were doing enough damage to kill in a single turn, but now... Yeah, that's weird for a Shin Megami Tensei game to take place in Europe. I mean, let's be fair, the only Shin Megami Tensei game that's technically taken place in America is the original release of... I'm going to see you. Uh, Persona. Uh. Tougher. Mm. Well, aside from that, the only SMT game I can think of that is set in the real world and takes place outside Japan is Strange Journey, which takes place in the Antarctic. A bit. Yeah. Killer. Weird looking airport. There's a save point there, that suggests this is the way forward, and I don't want to go forward without checking out that other door. Yeah, Strange Journey takes place in the Antarctic. And the thought was, like, the f they wanted it to be targeted at an international audience, so they, sp they deliberately set it outside Japan. You know, I suppose it really doesn't surprise me that if you're going to have two characters who are researchers in a Japanese-made game and actually explain where they went to college, it doesn't surprise me that they went to college in Harvard. Because it would either be Harvard or Oxford. Because apparently those are the only two universities anybody can go to and turn out a genius. You go anywhere else in any kind of media, you might be smart, but you're not genius. It's like, oh, what's that? You were too poor to get into these? Well, don't worry, you're smart enough then to have earned a full scholarship. And it'll add to your backstory that your classmates bullied you for being poor. Those are the only college backgrounds you can have in media like that. started thinking about it then, didn't you? Yep. Just how it works.
Alright, that went not as well as it could have, but we didn't die. Okay. Is it a strong presence, or was it a strong presence 15 levels ago? You say that, you know, I just killed four really powerful angels. You tricked me with your red colour and I thought you'd be weak twice. Kali and Daphne. Are you gonna repel all magic? This might get interesting. magic repelled and yet judging from the fact that Carly is wielding six swords I would assume a physical attack is responded with a counter what about you So, standard procedure, take out the mage. It's easier than I was expecting. Is this dialogue I would have had to go back to an area I, have, I would have no reason to go back to and talk to an NPC who I wouldn't have assumed would say anything different? You know what? Yeah, no, kill me. I want to. I want to redo this fight. Yeah, of course it is. deaths this time actually and I didn't turn the counter on let me get that counter back okay there it is 14 death plus death plus. I could have won that I'm pretty confident but we could win it a lot easier knowing that the mage is weak to ice and then taking the mage out before they can throw the buffs and debuffs.
This has like a lot of stuff that really should have been learned properly in game. Like not necessarily stuff outright told to you, but actual story stuff and not side stuff told to you by NPCs in a, sh in a specific space of time. Alright, now let's not spend five turns working this out. As much as I'm liking Digital Devil Saga 1 and 2, that's kind of irritating that they're not just giving you that story. Yeah. See how much better this has gone when Kali hasn't been buffed to hell. Please tell me you're still weak twice. Awesome. this is essentially working out. It's like, yeah, no, I brought a partner. The partner's immediately dead and then we just start kicking the shit out of the dude. And it goes on for a while before he gets another partner in. And then we immediately kill the partner and then keep kicking the shit out of the dude. Yeah, I can agree with that idea. But the way it sounds... The way it sounds makes it come off like to find a lot of this stuff out. Anytime you're given access to the world menu, check everywhere. Which is very counterintuitive and something you still wouldn't be likely to do on replays. Okay. In that one and this side. Oh, there was a hidden box over here. In toy, it's just check whenever you're out out in the world map. that although it's like it's not like i've not been fairly thorough with this playthrough to begin with a big karma terminal nice Pose the question of like how thorough they want you to be. And how thorough they consider thorough.
Now Teak's gone live. What's Teak playing? You're doing Cyberpunk. He's doing Cyberpunk. I look forward to hearing Teak doing Cyberpunk for the next year. That's always the... The really awkward thing when you get a new game like that. It's like... Yeah, it'd be great to stream. It might pull in some new viewers and everything, get some new followers. But also, it's your first time through, and now you're kind of stuck playing it when you're streaming, because if you don't, then that's a problem. And it's so huge. It's like I got... I started playing Assassin's Creed Odyssey a while back, and I debated doing it for the stream. But Assassin's Creed Odyssey is one of those Assassin's Creed games that's designed for you to play it for hundreds of hours. And it's like, yeah, no, great, I look forward to spending the rest of the year on this. And in what glitches he finds. That's also a concern, like, if there's a dick in the game, does that count as something Twitch will ban? Like, is Twitch going to want to ban that? Because, like, Twitch has its banned games list. Stuff like Honeypot and Criminal Girls. And it's like, why are they banned? And what is Sadpunk doing that means that that's not going to give you a ban if you see boobs or dick? There's a dick on your customization screen. Jeez. I suppose the real question I have with that idea is how much is too much? You customise a naked character. And so it becomes the question of double standard, like... Why is Twitch allowing that kind of thing and not something like Honey Pop or Criminal Girls? I'm not saying they should, I just want to know the difference. Ooh. That's a nice gimmick. I like that. However. You know what? I've realised now why we're not taking these guys down in single hits. Because when I was grinding, I figured out that we were up against enemies that had two weaknesses. Electric and fire. So I had a lack amp and fire amp there to make things smoother. To make things go quicker. It's not that they're tougher, it's that I'm not putting out the same damage because I've reduced the damage. Yeah. It's like, yeah, no, a blind playthrough might be offensive to actual blind gamers. Okay, cool. I understand where you're coming from there. Have you taken steps to make the site more accessible for blind gamers? No. Right, so you're just after brownie points. Got it. Yeah. It's the easy solution that just gives you some nice headlines. We removed a tag. How easy was that to do? Simple delete. Bam, it's gone from the database, from the system. Absolutely no work. It will give us so much good publicity. Which does make dumb decisions. They are a big company. And big companies make these dumb decisions. PR is everything in a lot of these cases. Which is particularly strange because... 
it's strange that they'll do these little things to get good PR. Because when they get the bad PR, it never matters. A lot of people are just like, nah, fuck it, I don't care. And then everything continues. And then the people who did care eventually just forget. Because there's so much going on. Constantly. And it's what these companies count on. So it does it does beg the question what's the point of these pub these good publicity moves yeah like I say my only real question with it is like if cyberpunk is allowed to be streamed with all of this like the dick and boobs on show and everything it's doing. What is the specific reason that the banned games can't? And I'm not talking about stuff that's banned because it's hateful. Stuff like, I assume ethnic cleansing is banned. If you've never seen that game, uh, probably for a good reason. People stopped talking about that game like 10 years ago. It's like, I, I understand why something like that would be banned, it's completely different. It used to be common, a common thing to see on stuff like, when you'd get top 10 lists of like, top 10 most offensive games, and you'd see, you'd see it on there a bunch. It's like, it's, it's undeniable, just, that it exists to be hate speech. And banning that, understandable, cannot disagree. Sex is subjective. How much is too much in regards to sex is way more subjective. But yeah, Ethnic Cleansing is one of those games that popped up on, like, top offensive games lists back when people used to do that. I don't see that many of those anymore, which is kind of surprising. But it'd always be alongside games like uh, Super Columbine Massacre RPG. Which is a real game. And stuff like Rayplay. And Rayplay 2 which were Japanese-only games. I only remember the premise of the first one. I don't remember the second one. The first one was you are a guy who is stalking a mother, a single mother and her two daughters. Yeah, they never came outside Japan. And they never came outside Japan with good reason. You see, those I can understand uh, why they would be banned. And there is a discussion to be had with that kind of thing of it's a crime. You're banning it because it's a game about, partake, about partaking in horrible crime. But then why does something like Grand Theft Auto get to stick around when it is also about partaking in horrible crime? You're judging one crime to be spe specifically worse than the other and it's a difficult thing to judge. That is not a conversation I am interested in getting into. Tone. That's what it is. Charm shot. When did I get a bullet that can do that? God damn.
yeah, if, you, if you've never seen some of these, like look up some of the old um, top offensive games. Because some of the shit that got released... And of course, all of this is for PC where there really isn't any kind of prevention for it. Yeah, no, make a PC game. Oh, you're new. Murder and often drugs. Hmm. Like I say it's, it's not a thing I want to get into. Because then you went to the slippery slope if one thing is okay, why isn't another? You're classing one thing as worse than another, it's an awkward position to be in. And you know what? I don't want to drive this stream in that direction. Yes, yeah, so I'm going to assume that's progress. Like, really, the question I have is just, like, if Cyberpunk is okay with that stuff, I j I'm just curious what the specific function of stuff like Honey Pop and Honey Cam Studio and Criminal Girls not being allowed is. That's my thought, like, looking at it and comparing other stuff that is banned suggests Cyberpunk should probably be a banned game on Switch. I'm not saying it should be, it's just looking at the other stuff that is banned suggests this. And also, while there's that whole thing that... Uh, the, the whole thing of the epileptic seizures in the game... Uh, I would say it should be banned while that thing is still in the game. It's like, oh yeah, no, you're just... You're watching a streamer play it and you have no idea about it and you don't have the game yourself. And then, boop, oh no, you've got a seizure. Okay, let's go and hit that save. Commodacha, yeah, I remember. Uh, I remember you were talking about that. Well, the gameplay of Honey Pop was dating sim and match three game. Like, the main gameplay of it was visual novel and bejeweled. It's just that the end goal of that was to have sex. And the, there are two versions of the sex scenes, the censored and uncensored. And uncensored is still kind of racy. Like, still pretty... Mm, no, censored is still pretty... Mm, I don't know, maybe because Honey Pop had a bigger profile, maybe that's what it is. For some reason I thought for Some reason I thought this was a big karma terminal, so I was going for a store. And it's like, wait, no, there is a big karma terminal nearby. It was up the stairs. Strip clothes from girls via the puzzle game. Puzzle match game. 
visual novel has on it. Yeah. It's like if you've never played Honey Pop, it's not a bad game. I saw it super cheap. I think it was on Indie Gala. It was, I think it was like a pound. I was like, you know what? I'm curious. I want to see what the fuss over this is. I got it. And you know what? Gameplay wise, it's fairly compelling. The characters are not horribly written. Match 3 gameplay is a pretty addictive style of gameplay. Like, there's not anything there that's particularly awful as a game. It's just, oh, it ends in sex. It's also a game that makes you work for the sex. Yeah. I mean, I'm not, I don't feel like, I'm not going to justify myself for having bought and played Honey Pop. It was entertaining. I don't remember the characters in Honey Pot being particularly bad. They weren't amazing, but they were fine. Come on. What dodge? Yeah. I don't think I've got it. I've got a bunch of weird visual novels that are probably that probably have sex in them on Steam. Because there was a point where I was just buying a load of PC games, and now I have like almost 600 games on Steam. It's one of the awkward things about buying PC games. You can get so much in bundles. Especially if you're going to check out Humble Bundle. You son of a bitch. I was not expecting to see you again. I don't even remember what you're weak to. It ain't that. It's like uh, Humble Bundle at one point had a... Had one of the bundles going and it was like 15 games from the Sakura Girl series. I have no idea what it is. My friends, t uh, my friends after I bought it were like, why do you own the Sakura, why do you own so many Sakura Girls games? You know, like Pawn, right? And I was like, I had no idea. All I was aware of it was like 15 visual novels for like, 50, for like 20 pound, if that, probably cheaper on Humble Bundle. Kotodama, the seven mysteries of Fujisawa. Can you just grab it, yeah. I feel like that's just how it is in PC gaming. Maybe not anymore. It seems like... It seems like the sales don't go as deep anymore from what I see. That was easy, I expected. Like, it seems like the, the sales aren't as, like, as much money off as they used to be. Like, there was a point for an ex for, like, a long time. Whereas, like, you could just buy so many PC games so cheap. Even now, if you want to spend a bit of time looking around... It's like, oh yeah, no, games on Steam. Also, Green Man Gaming, Fanatical, Humble Store. Like, there are so many different places to get Steam keys from. And it's not even like they're illegitimate keys. Not like you're even going to CD, uh, to cdkeys.com or G2A. No, you're buying legitimate keys from a competing site, and you're saving so much money. Which leads to the whole thing in your mind of, yeah, no, I'll buy this game that's probably garbage for super cheap. Because if it is garbage, what have I lost? A fiver? Probably less. 
It's like I've got Umbrella Core on PS4. And everything you'll ever hear anybody say about that game says it's really bad. I got it for like £2. It's like, oh, it's £2. Like, yeah. Terrible. You know what? I'll probably have more fun with that than I will with, say, a meal. I've, I've bought food. I've, bu I've bought a meal for more than £2 that's turned out to be shit. So, you know, I'll buy Umbrella Core for £2, and if it turns out to be terrible, well, it's not the worst thing I've ever spent £2 on. I think that's one of the pitfalls of PC gaming. Consumer-wise, it's fantastic. Like, undeniably fantastic. That you can just get... These games so cheap. If you spend some time looking around and if you're willing to wait. On the other side, it also creates the issue of... You're probably going to end up spending more. You'll get more for what you spent, but you're going to spend more because, oh yeah, no, such good deals. I've thrown down a lot of money before in sales and game sales. This is the this is not the way forward. Great. This is what I was after then. Anju Saka? Considering that's a plant I've not seen before, that is probably gonna get me a lot of money. Huh. Weaken the magic, but it's still two spells to kill. Just can't stop me. But yeah, I, I have no shame in the fact that I bought and played Honey Pop. Not really a reason why you should feel shame over it. It's fun. And like I say, I spent more on spent more on things that I've enjoyed less. something about a well a well made puzzle game regardless of what's around it in the gameplay there's just something about a well made puzzle game that can keep you playing it's like how in Tetris like you got a good Tetris game going and you can be there for a long time if you're good enough to keep it going or Puzzle League I fucking love Puzzle League Not that keen on Dr. Mario, honestly. And uh, there aren't that many puzzle games that hold up as well as stuff like Tetris and Puzzle League.
They all got shocked, which is very unlikely to happen. Are they going to repel physical? Is this a trap? It isn't a trap. Huh. Yeah, there are very few puzzle games that really stick with you like that. You know what? It's not even stick with. There are very few puzzle games that have been made as widely available. I think that's the real trick. There was one on mobile that was actually really entertaining, uh, that I quite enjoyed. Threes. Uh, that was fun. I recommend looking into it if you've never heard of it. Threes. Yeah. Yeah, Diaz had some good ones as well. Tetris DS is still my favourite way to play Tetris. Tetris DS was great. Save point. What's this? Nice. Yeah, Tetris DS. Like if you have the, uh, if you have any way of playing Tetris DS, Tetris DS is great. It has six modes, which most of which are worth playing. Like push Tetris on Tetris DS was really fun. Um, standard Tetris, touch Tetris wasn't great. Uh, I forget what the other two are. Like, Tetris DS was really good. And it was very much focused around Nintendo as well, so that was neat. Interesting, just a corridor of darkness. Yes, I am. Point of no return. Wasn't expecting this. a gimmick fight. Presumably the shadow versions of our characters still hold the same weaknesses. I don't have to spend time walking for them then. I'm gonna assume Chernobog is invincible while the sword form is present. And I'm also going to assume the sword form will remain until we take care of the shadows. Interesting though, I expected the sword form to actually attack.
Hmm. Alright, here we go. Work it out. That was easy. Yeah, Tetris DS is really hard to pick up now. It was hard to pick up like 10 years ago. My recommendation, especially considering the DS is a dead system, uh, my recommendation would be pick up a flash cart. And then you'll also be able to play all those good games that never came outside Japan. Because the DS has a bunch of fan translations of stuff that is that is pretty interesting. Like Tales of Innocence. And of course uh, stuff like Somabringer. The DS Chibi Robo game that wasn't released outside Japan. It's like, hey, do you like Chibi Robo? Do you want more Chibi Robo? Check out this Chibi Robo game that wasn't released outside Japan. Also, that other Chibi Robo game that is available on that's also on DS that was released outside Japan. That was only available exclusively at Walmart. Yeah, Tales of Innocence. Tales of Hearts. Uh, they were working on a translation, a fan translation for that. As far as I'm aware, that never went anywhere. I think they... I, I assume they stopped because Tales of Hearts R was announced to be coming out in the West on Vita. But I don't have any actual confirmation of that. But Tales of the Tempest is also available uh, through fan translation. Yeah, the West got Hearts R. My assumption is the translation on Hearts for the DS stopped because of that. But I, I have no confirmation that that's the reason. Ah, oh, shit. I don't want him to die. I want the extra turn to revive Surf and then kill him. And that had Master Six Realms as well. Well, I need to work on this in the mission screen. Like, this isn't awful, uh, but, like, have a background for it. If you're wondering what I'm doing, I'm re I'm soft resetting. Because I don't want to lose the... Uh... Gale and Surf are at the same level, I think, with Six Realms. Gale finished Six Realms there. Surf would have also finished Six Realms. I don't want to lose that. Damn it. Details translation groups quit. There was one I was following, Sky or something, who did the Innocence translation, was doing some others as well. And I think he eventually just stopped. For whatever reason. Absolute zero. There you go. That's another one of them. What was Sky? Sky might have been uh, the Final Fantasy Type Zero uh, translator, actually. That ended kind of messily. Because, like, oh, yeah, no, Square is actually going to release Type-0 in the West. And 
they did Type Zero HD, and the dude was unhappy with it in some regard. Like, apparently, they'd been in contact with Square, and like, the dude was unhappy with it in some regard. That's disappointing. And they were they were unhappy with Square's official release in some way or something. I have no no idea what. I don't remember what the reasoning for it was. And then they just released the translation they had of the PS the PSP version of Type Zero, which was done. It was fully complete. So now you can get PSP Type Zero. Fully translated. And I think that's what uh, Sky was uh, that I'm thinking of. Yeah, I check, every now and then I'll check some games that I want to be released or fan translated. And some of the Tales games fall into that, like Tales of Rebirth and Destiny 2. Actual Destiny 2, not... Um, Eternia. Yeah. And so I think I've seen some partially done translations of a few of them. But it's like I don't see the point in playing a partially done fan translation of an RPG. Maybe we'll get to play it one day. Maybe uh, Namco will just turn around at some point and release it. Localize it. You never know. Especially given that Tails is so much bigger now than it was in the PS2 era. Bigger in the West. There we go. See, I didn't even get to read Watch it out. He of Rebirth. Makes sense. Like, Tails... Why didn't that master six realms that time? It's weird. Yeah, Tales, Tales in the West is way bigger now than it was in the PS2 era. Destiny Chronicles. What is Destiny Chronicles? No, we fought the same number of enemies. The The only difference is the shadows were Surf, not Gale. And I'm going to assume Surf was weaker. All oh, right. I'm going to assume Surf was weaker. Because taking down Shadow Gale took two turns. Taking down Shadow Surf managed to get that done in one. The same level, though. If it was Sarah, I could understand. Sarah's a higher level. I don't think it's weird. What is the shop dude doing here?
Okay. Let's see how much that one flower we got sells for. 112,000. Yeah, when it comes to re like re-releasing old games that weren't released in the West and giving them a Western release, anything can happen these days. Like Nintendo turned around and gave us uh, the original Fire Emblem, while there's something better they could have done, and you know they could choose not to have it as a limited time thing. They still turn around and localize the original Fire Emblem. And if you want to get even more interesting than that, Metal Wolf Chaos came out in the West. They remastered Metal Wolf Chaos and released that in the West. Oh great, enemies that I haven't seen. And if you don't know what Metal Wolf Chaos is, Metal Wolf Chaos is a game that came out on the original Xbox, exclusive to the original Xbox, only in Japan. The... Had you play as the President of the United States, it was developed by From Software, you play as the President of the United States, who has to survive a coup attempt by the vice president and you do this by jumping into the president's giant mech and fighting the vice president and the league and the army of terrorists he has It's a really interesting game that I've been wanting to play for years. And all of a sudden they turn around and say, yeah, no, we're gonna we'll release this in the West. And then they did. It's available on PS4. The Metal Wolf Chaos Remaster. Get in the robot, Mr. President. And it's a game that you look at it and you think, everybody over the years has been like, why didn't this game come out in the US? It's made for the US. I mean, all the voice acting is in English. And everything. And it's not even bad voice acting, it's voice acting done by a Canadian voice company. There's like, you know, there's... Like back in the day, a bunch of the, um voice acting stuff was done in Canter if it was done professionally. This is a case of like, why didn't it come out in the West? It seems tailor-made for it. My thought is that people would have assumed that Japan were making fun of the US. Which they might have been. But the game is so awesome that it shouldn't matter. Yeah, for a long time, like, a lot of uh, English voice acting was done in Canada. Like, uh, Resident Evil 2 and Resident Evil 3, the original RE2 and RE3, uh, Canada. With Canadian actors. What is this going to get us? Divine Light and Fire of Sinai. Divine Light costs... That's not half hit points. That's interesting. Work for an incentive support line. That's probably a, pr a cost thing. Like the thing that became infamous over the last 20 years or so of... Uh, in, like, call centers in India. Like, why is that cheaper? Cheaper for them to have them there.
I guess we're gonna start trying to get some more of these locked uh, mantras. Hopefully, more of them will be stat boosts. Yeah. Interesting. Get rid of the elephant first. Awesome. I like it when I just immediately hit a weakness. I can believe that. Like, there's, there's a lot of stuff that you wouldn't suspect is Canadian. Every now and then they'll slip up on particular words. A lot of voice actors and actors, when they're doing an accent that isn't their native one, will slip up on specific words. It's like if you play Resident Evil Code Veronica. Steve is a little more obviously Canadian. And you can tell by the way he says sorry. The O is extended on oh, sorry, so it's sorry. And it's more obvious as a result. them will try and cover it up a little better or just won't have specific words in their dialogue that they'll trip up over not even deliberately they'll just be fortunate with it it's like while Steve is a good example with sorry in code Veronica Claire in the meantime I don't think ever says sorry And Claire is voiced by a Canadian voice actress, Alison Court. Ultimately, it doesn't really matter all that much. All right, let's go get a plane. Interesting. I've been thinking this for a little while, but the airport doesn't seem like a huge dungeon so far, but it's given us a lot of save points. And I can probably word that better. Based on what we've explored of the airport so far, it feels like it has more save points than it needs. There's one, and then, okay. That's a reasonable distance, but then there's that. That's like, okay, go through there. And you go down, circle round here, unlock that door. And then you get access to this one and this one. But go up the stairs and then you're here. And then, okay, over here and... A little short maybe, but it's a little more reasonable. And then that to this. And it feels like it's a lot of save points for a small distance. Oh, great. How many light balls do I have? Nine. 
Oh, that's enough. Honestly, kind of hope they wouldn't bring this gimmick back. Okay. Yeah, I was hoping we were done with it. Yeah, I don't worry about it, Chanson. I got stumbling into things myself like that. It's not overly bullshit. It was obvious quickly enough what it was, and I'm going to assume that's why the item shop is there. Struck me as weird that who's there at like to begin with. Oh, wow, the shops here, what the hell? As I'm guessing it's specifically for this. Even with the light ball, this place seems darker than the egg did. Glad that didn't work. Uh, it's not like the egg was dark because it was out of power, is it? It's a fair point. Run out of magic, though. Really, I expect there to be something dangerous. Uh. Gonna take him out in one turn if I've gone two hits on the stunned one. Oh well. Ball's effect ended. Doesn't seem to have changed much, honestly. I hate Hammer. 
and the fact that it takes off such a significant chunk of your health and the hamon takes off even more but you know what i prefer that to the instant death it usually is I mean, we've seen how much of a dick Mudo's been to make up for that in this playthrough. Alright, so this is progress. Hey, don't hit them like that. Damage does not make up for it. But yeah, no, we've got pretty big health bars. Pretty big magic meters. But we're still using like 12 MP per turn for the dines. Yeah, I know it's a little while back that the red door signified a room. Rather than uh, possible progress or just anything. It's always just a contained room. Uh, block ring, they said. Eh. I don't feel the need to use the block ring because, like, avoided attacks. Unless I'm being an idiot, avoided attack is only going to happen once. The yeah, rebel's live. What's he playing? Rebirth. Oh gee, oh gee, re re That's nice. I feel like you see a lot of people playing the remakes way more often than the originals these days. But the originals still have their own value. Light ball. Just notice that I only have one uh, core. Whatever it is. So I hope there are no damaging areas down here. Save point. That suggests progress, so head the other way. But first, change Gale's mantra. That unlocks that centerpiece. Esoteric 4, which is level up skills. Level gift. Yeah. I mean, this one will also unlock this centerpiece. It costs 25,000? Yeah, sure. That's an interesting question. Demi Fiend immediately springs to mind. Demifiend could have a bunch based around his own abilities. But if you were to do something like Flynn, say you did Flynn, you could pull off a similar idea to what um, they did with Dragon Quest Hero. 
of different costumes being different characters. And so, like, you do Flynn, there's no reason why you couldn't have a different costume of Flynn be uh, original SMT main character and a separate costume be LF from SMT2. And then a bunch of their attacks would be able to revolve around uh, summoning demons. I think you'd specifically want a main character. But then the question becomes, like, what would the stage be? Even if you pick one character, what would the stage be? Kind of. But not in the sense... A little more like Joker, actually. Like, you're actually controlling the character, and you summon demons to do their magic attacks, I suppose is what I'm thinking. A Mala network is not a bad idea if you go with Demifiend. And Demifiend could do a lot himself. Like, before Demifiend, none of the SMT main characters could actually use magic. Yeah, I suppose what I'm thinking of with the idea of uh, a summoner character is basically what they have for uh, Joker with the way he summons Arsene. Just, you know, different demons rather than the one persona. If you went with the summoner as well, you could also have uh, the Demonica as one of the costumes from Strange Journey. It's basically, he has stuff that involves the knife, a grappling hook, and his gun. And then all of the other abilities are summoning Persona, summoning the Persona. Yeah, I think Demifiend would arguably be more interesting. And then you could do the thing that Smash does every now and then of the characters having two costumes. Like, Joker has two costumes. He has Joker and he has regular high school student. And then the alternate versions of those are just different colours. You could do something similar with Demifiend. Demifiend and ordinary high school student Hito Shura before he became the monster. Maybe, but they've those guys have only just popped up recently, and the rest of the game didn't care.
And the Amala network is a good idea for a location for a stage. That said, a Marla network conceptually, I think, would possibly come off a little too similar to Mementos, which is Joker's stage. Take care of it. I am in no hurry to get Persona 5 Royal myself. Yeah, I've, I've said it before, like, I put enough money into Persona 5. The Royal just feels like a dick move, honestly. Yeah. At one point I was going to do Persona 5 for stream, but Bane hadn't played it. And I didn't want to spoil it for him. So I did one session of it and then stopped. It was actually kind of an awkward time. I was between games at that time, and I didn't have a set list yet of like what I was going to be doing. So I was just trying to find something to do next for the stream. So I did Persona 5 for a session, and I was like, wait, Bane's not played this, and I don't want to spoil it for him. Oh, hey, more light balls. I can understand that. It is a good game. Gameplay wise, it's got a lot over the previous ones. It's got a lot going for it. It's very stylish. The battle system is really well designed. And I kind of wish other games, other JRPGs, would kind of take a hint from that. It's, it's a game you'll enjoy playing. I have no doubt about that. But I, I get what you mean with overhyping it. I've seen a lot of games overhyped and then I play them and it's like hasn't done it for me. Maybe my expectations were higher since this is apparently the best game ever. This will be progress then, which means the stairs go back here and we can hit the big terminal to do a full, full heal, which includes magic. Yeah, I, I do think you'll enjoy it. There is a lot of good stuff to it. Uh, very little tedium, the story's designed well enough to drag you in. Characters are fairly well written. I don't think it's as tedious as some of the other best games ever I've played. Okay. 
wasn't expecting this. You know what? I don't want to do this now. Field hunting has never worked out well for me. Uh, it's hard to try and give you an objective opinion on Persona 5 since there are reasons why I'm down on it, which have entirely to do with Atlas, rather than the game itself. It's well done, it's a very solid game. Is it better than the other games? I don't know. The battle system is, the way the battles are laid out, and that's just the menu. I think the battle menu of Persona 5 is one of the best ideas in RPGs. Like if there was one thing I would give undeniable praise to, the way you navigate the battle menu is probably the best thing I've ever seen in a JRPG. It's fantastic. Like specifically the menu, not necessarily the battle, it's the way battles work themselves, but the menu. Like everything about that is handled really well. Musically, it's pretty good. There are some really good tracks in there. Rivers in the Desert was a really good track. Plays in the, um... One specific dungeon. Each dungeon has its own theme. As... I, yeah, it's standard by that point. Persona 4 had that. I forget if Persona 3 had that for the Full Moon dungeons. It's good stuff. Uh, one thing I recommend doing immediately, Chancer. The DLC for the original Persona 5 is free on Persona 5 Royal. I recommend you just grab that bundle. Like, grab it now, even if you don't have the game. And then it'll be there for you when you get the game. And the main thing about that is just, it's uh, the costumes, and the costumes come with... Like, the costumes are costumes of other games, and they come with music from the other games. Like a Gekku Khan High outfit for everybody. And it's not the same outfit, it's outfits that represent specific characters for each character. Well, there's Tartarus, but I honestly don't remember the, um, the music for any of the full moon dungeons. So it's like, um, Joker will be dressed, like Joker's Gakukan outfit is the main characters and Ryuji's will be uh, Junpei's and Anne's will be Yukari's and so on and so forth. And it comes with mass destruction. There's no problem, Jensen. It's like, it's, it's worth jumping on that, I think. It like, comes with mass destruction. That you can, if you get tired of Last Surprise, which is a really good battle track, I'll definitely say that. But if you get tired of it, 80 hours in, you could change it to mass destruction. Or you could change it to something else, because there are costumes for SMT4, Persona 1, Persona 2, 
Um, Shin Megami Sensei if. Yeah, if you want that baby, baby, baby. I've not been able to confirm it myself because I've not played Persona 5 since getting the costumes, but from what I've heard, from what I've heard, the music that goes along with the uh, Persona 4 costumes isn't reach out to the truth, it's time to make history, which is disappointing. I was just at the save point. I was going the wrong way anyway. Yeah, it's disappointing. I remember when I first played Persona 4 Golden and I got into a battle and the first battle had Reach Out to the Truth, the first battle version. And then standard battles after that didn't. I was like, they got rid of Reach Out to the Truth? And it's like, no, it turns out in Persona 4 Golden, Reach Out to the Truth is the battle theme when you get the advantage. And I was like, ah, oh, cool. That's another reason to get the advantage then, because Reach Out to the Truth is the better song. I knew I should have checked the mantras, and I don't know why I didn't. I'm looking at them and thinking I should do that, but nah. Then, where did it lead? But yeah, each costume set comes with music from the game they're from, so there's there's a lot there. Yeah, Persona 4 Golden has it's not dynamic battle music. It's the in original Persona 4, the only battle track. In standard battles, which reach out to the truth. In Persona 4 Golden, they changed that. So if you. You know what? I've, I've, I've said it wrong. It's like when you have the advantage. It's not like Skies of Arcadia. It's if you get the hit on the enemy outside of battle and then you start the battle with the advantage. The same system Persona 3 had and standard Persona 4 had. Like you hit the enemy from behind before they before they spot you, or if you hit the enemy before they before they hit you, and so you start with the advantage and it plays Reach Out to the Truth instead, uh, which is good. I like Reach Out to the Truth. <coughs> yeah, that's what I meant. So it became uh, another reason to get the advantage immediately. Because Reach Out to the Truth is the better song. That should be another centerpiece opened up.
There we go, another stat boost. That's good. Actually, can increase by three. That's good. I like that. What do you got? The Nulls. That's. Mm. Um. That. Surf can probably go for that one. So these? What do you got? E Thief. Howl Innovate. Archangel. Evil Spirit. Yeah, no, go for these since these will be two easy ones then. Yeah. On top of those costumes, though, uh, you might get personas at the extra personas that were DLCs for Persona Five. I don't know. I don't remember. Um, I don't think I checked. I was just after the costumes. But Persona Five Royal also has more DLC on top of that that isn't just free. I didn't look much into it, but what I remember was swimsuits. And it's like, you know what? I am never going to be at a point where I'll pay, I will pay for, for swimsuit costumes. There might be other stuff. But it's not stuff you need or should really care about. And it's, it's another point of contention with people, because, oh, here's Persona 5 Royal, the definitive release, with its own separate DLC. Yeah. Honestly, costumes are something I can live without. The main reason I ended up getting the costume DLC for Persona 5 was because I could get it in a bundle, and it had music. Like, the music is what I was after. The costumes reference in previous games was a bonus. I feel like the controller should be vibrating with that. Yeah, vibration's on and working. Mm. Alright, how much further? How would stairs lead? Somewhere we've not been. Possibly progress? No, like, like I said, the um, become a point of contention amongst SMT fans. The Persona Five Royal, it's supposed to be the definitive edition of Persona Five, 
and it's got more DLC. And it really just, it's another point to look at with what Atlas seems to have become. With excessive DLCs, and especially DLCs that don't add anything. I mean, there was the thing with uh, Persona 3 and Persona 5 dancing that they were bare-bones games that were made to be completed with the DLC. Like, there's no story mode, there's no quest to it, just play the songs and dance to the songs. But there's not a huge number and you're supposed to buy DLC songs to expand that. In both games. But meanwhile, Persona 4 dancing was a complete game and had a full story. And a lot of people liked that story. DLC was a bad move for gaming. I think in the same way that being able to patch a game after launch was arguably a bad move for gaming. It's created a safety net. And the safety net itself isn't the bad idea, but it's the fact that gaming will not operate without it now. But it ex the companies expect that safety net there. So games come out and far too often, the pr on top of the cost that you have of buying a game at launch new, being more than you'd pay later, on top of that, so many games are just considerably buggier than they should be at launch. And in a lot of cases, it feels like you're not paying for... It feels like the companies aren't getting testers in a lot of ways. It's like, yeah, no, the games function technically barely. And so you get the idea that the people who buy at launch are really just paying for the privilege of being a tester. I'd have to go with this one and get this one anyway. I think that's going to do it for today, though. I think it's a good place to call it. We have a direct line forward, we know where we're going. With the healing point being just back there, I'm going to assume this is going to be another boss and or a big story sequence. So I, I feel confident in just stopping here for today. <sighs> we've, we've, done prog we've done some good progress. We finished the grinding, we took out the Seraphs, and we've made good progress through the dungeon. It is. Of course it is. Yeah, the game was a little obvious about it. Which I appreciate. I do appreciate that. 35 hours. 35 and a half hours. That's not counting deaths. Which I think we're currently at 16. 16 deaths. Just a little. Um, yeah. I think we've done some good progress today. I want to thank everybody for joining me. Uh, thanks so much for watching. I always really appreciate the support. Big special thank you to everybody in the chat. Uh, Teak, Lino, Whitey Bite Me, and Chanson. Uh, thanks for keeping me company, guys. Chat is always the best part of the stream. And especially to Chanson for sticking around for the entire stream. 
And since Chansom is the only person I am seeing in the audience, according to the chatbot, uh, there isn't really a need to shout anybody out, because anybody I could shout out, Chansom already follows. Uh, and not really much point in a raid. Not because we only have one person, but because... Like, what what's even going on? Uh, Wham Bam is doing Resident Evil 3 Remake. Tika's doing Cyberpunk, and I don't really want to go and jump into that. Rebel's doing RE2, and that doesn't really match up. Nice. Uh, we... No need for a raid. Hey, man, good company is worth... Well worth it. And I appreciate you sticking around, Chansom, and keeping company. And listening to my complaints, as always. Yeah, that might not be a bad idea. I complain a lot myself. Maybe as a point reward, add a thing so that you can put your complaints in for me to read out. complaints about anything except the stream we're not allowed to complain about the stream it's not eh, it could be an interesting idea Ugh. my forehead looks pretty big on the on the stream uh. Uh. <laughs> No, it's more a case of, I've, I've said this before, like, the game redemptions are expensive. And not a lot of people are into the, into RPGs to begin with. So, like, yeah, no, stick around to earn 50,000 points to redeem one of these games. Or stick around to redeem, to earn 100,000 points to just pick a game from a list. I can understand why some people wouldn't be into that. Also, I added Earthbound to the redemption list. I've never done Earthbound before, and I want to get to it at some point. Really just to do Mother 3. I've heard Mother 3 is fantastic, and I'm pretty interested. But I think I should do Earthbound first. Yeah, it's just so that there's more stuff, more fun stuff to do. Like, Leo seems to be having fun with the the reader quotes, and, like, the Ask Me Anything isn't really going anywhere, but it's there, I guess. Just to add stuff that people can use points for that's a little more interesting. And some people just aren't interested in game redemptions at all. Some people don't really care. Some people are like, nah, play what you want. I'm I'll I'll watch. I don't really care what the specific game is. Yeah. Anyway, uh, like I say, thank you so much for watching, everybody. I always really appreciate the support. Big special thank you to everybody in the chat. Uh, chat is always the best part of the stream. We will be back on Saturday, 8 p.m. Greenwich Mean Time, GMT, with more Ninja Garden Black as we continue that. Uh, we were heading to the military supply base. So if you like hearing me swear, come and join us on Saturday because the Ninja Garden stream, last week the Ninja Garden stream was very sweary. Game deserved that though. Game deserved to be swore to be swore at. It's bullshit. Not saving properly. Any game has levels. What kind of game has separate levels and level transitions? And here's your objective for the new level screens, and then doesn't save between levels. <clears throat> yeah, I'm still angry about that. It was dumb. Anyway. Uh. Once again, uh, I want to thank everyone for watching. Have yourselves a fantastic time of day. And take care. We'll catch you next time, guys. Bye.